Hi there! So today we are going to be looking at isometric drawing techniques. So basically this is a way of drawing a shape in 3D um, so that it looks realistic, it looks accurate and you can see different sides of the shape. So this is what we're going to be aiming for. This here is an isometric cube drawing. Um, so this is what we're aiming to do. Now, you'll see here that I've got some isometric drawing paper. Now, this is very special paper because the angles in each of these little diamonds here, if I hold it up so that you can see more clearly, the angles in these diamonds here are actually 30 degrees from the horizontal. So if I were to mark on here, right at the bottom, a horizontal line across some of the diamonds you would have a 30 degree angle just in here so based on that we are going to be creating a isometric drawing of a cube today and we will know that the angle of these lines here the four of these are going to be at 30 degrees from the horizontal line for example just down here so there's a number of things that you need to make sure that you have first of all a nice sharp pencil I've got a coloured pencil here as well to use at the end to show you how to label some things. I've also got a nice straight ruler. Um, I'm using my metal one today. And then I've also got a protractor just to double check some things. But really, you don't necessarily need a protractor. It's just a handy tool to have. OK, first of all, then I need to draw the central line just here on the cube. So what I'm going to do is line up my ruler with the centre of the diamonds visible on the page. So what I'm going to do for this bit is I'm going to zoom in a little bit further so that you can really clearly see the drawing that I'm making and where it sits on the lines. Hopefully you should be able to see a little bit clearly now. I have lined up my ruler with where the diamonds intersect. Now I've decided I'm not going to do my cube um, too big today. I'm just going to do it uh, five diamonds tall at the front here. Now I'm going to draw my lines quite darkly, but you can do yours quite light as you're practicing. I just want to make sure that you can clearly see what I'm doing. So I've counted down one, two, three, four, and five diamond heights. Next up, I'm going to draw the bottom sections of my cube. So I'm going to line my ruler up with this line here that is going up to the side, this 30 degree line. And again, because it's a cube and all of the sides will be the same length, I'm going to count five diamond widths. One, two, three, four, five, and then I'll just go over it to make that a little bit darker. And that's my left hand side. And then over on the other side, just exactly the same again. One, two, three, four, five. So I've now got the middle vertical line and then I've got the bottom and the bottom here. Next up, I'm going to draw these two sides. So they're the furthest away pieces of my cube. I'm going to line up my ruler in the same way that I did for this central vertical line. And again, because it's a cube, the sides are all even lengths um, and widths. So it's five diamonds. One, two, three, four, five. Make it darker so that you can see. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing again over on the right hand side. Okay, so at the moment you can see I've drawn one, two, three, four, five lines. All of them are five diamond widths in length. And what this means is that my cube is going to be equal on all of its sides. 
I'm going to grab my ruler again. And now I'm actually going to join up the top of these two lines. It should be five wide already. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, perfect. So I can just draw a line between the two to join them up. And the same on the other side. Again, you should just double check that you've got one, two, three, four, five, or however big you're doing your cubes. If you're doing it seven, cube, uh, seven diamonds tall, that's absolutely fine. You can then make all of your sides seven diamonds wide or tall. Okay, and then I have to do the top face of my cube. So I've got the front and the side here, um, so I can clearly see both of those. If I wanted to add a design onto this later on, I could but and use these guidelines to make sure that my typography or my design uh, was accurate as well. So we can see that it almost looks like it's actually getting smaller as it goes further away, similar to one point perspective drawing, but it's not because it is staying the same width and height you can see here. Okay, so again up here I need to be drawing my um, top edge. Now this is actually the very top of my cube but it's right at the back. So this time, even though it's on the left hand side, I'm actually going to be following the line that is going up towards the right. Again, five diamonds wide. One, two, three, four and five. Making it darker for you. So I've drawn in this line here and then over on the other side, joining it up, double checking one, two, three, four, five wide. And that is my isometric cube. Now you can see here that there are a number of lines that look like they are actually at similar angles and that's because this grid this consistent isometric paper actually does make sure that your lines are parallel. There are absolutely no lines on this drawing that are perpendicular. Even though in a normal cube you would have 90 degree angles, that is not the case on isometric drawing. So here, this is not a 90 degree angle. And if I were to check it with my trusty protractor, We can see here that this angle from this line up to this line is actually just less than 120. In fact, if I line it up a bit better, there we go. It is on 120, okay? The same as if I were to measure just down here. This actually goes to 60 rather than 90. So you can see that the angles are not the same as what would be in a normal flat 2D square drawing. And then down here, if I were to just double check the angle, I'm going to use my red pencil to show you the horizontal line. So if I were to put in a red horizontal line across here and check the angle, you'll be able to see that that is 30 degrees. So I could actually label that on there if I wanted to. The other thing that you can label then, and I've already mentioned them once, is the parallel lines. So you can see I've got one, two, and three. These lines are all parallel, so I can mark them with a single arrow going all in the same direction. I've also got this set here, one, two and three, but because they are a different type of parallel line to the first set, I'm going to mark them with a double arrow symbol. And finally, there is a third set of parallel lines. I've got the three verticals, one, two and three. Again, because they are a different set, I will mark them with three arrows all going in the same direction, pointing upwards.
So this is the basis of your isometric drawing. You've, uh, with this, you've got your cube. Um, obviously, if you wanted to draw a cuboid, then you would simply elongate the vertical lines or perhaps make these sections here a bit longer for a kind of shorter, wider cuboid. There's a number of ways that you can use this technique using various different three dimensional shapes. And then you can use the guidelines to help you draw on your design. For example, if I was to add some writing here, I would make sure that my writing meets the top and bottom of a guideline. So if I were to write the word design, for example, I would make sure that my upwards lines are vertical, but any horizontal lines of the text follow the guidelines. And if I wanted to get it really exact, then I could use my ruler to do the vertical lines as well. I hope that this tutorial has been helpful for you today. Let me know how you get on with it and see what other shapes that you can apply it to. Have a really lovely day. Bye.